Welcome to the You Need More Money podcast. I'm your host, Matt Monero, where I come to you every week from my studio in Dallas, Texas. Here's the simplest way to be happy at work. I call it the triangle of trouble or the triangle of success. Now, if you're a manager in an organization, you're the manager of your own company, you're the manager of somebody else's company, it doesn't matter, you need to understand the three components that make up a happy relationship at work. And I want you to visualize a triangle. And the triangle has three points on it, the top and the two lower sides. At the top, I want you to put the word non And then the next word next to that is accountable, non-accountable. Down in the lower corner, I want you to put non-contributing. And on the opposite side of the triangle, I want you to put non-appreciated. That's the fastest way to make for a bad relationship in your organization in which you or your employees, your people feel non-accountable, non-contributing, and non-appreciated. That's a bad setup. Because if your people feel one of those three things, you can pretty much get in there and through a conversation, through some discussion, through some mentoring, you can fix that situation. You can fix their their unhappiness, their disgruntledness. But dude, if you have all three of those in your organization, it's over. You'll never fix that. So if your employees feel non-accountable, non-contributing, and non-appreciated, Dude, you've, you're working with some really low-level folks because anybody who would put up with that environment is certainly not bringing you your vet, your be, their best. Again, what I call the triangle of trouble is where the group, the organization, people within the organization feel non-accountable, non-contributing, and non-appreciated. So let's fix it. Here's how you fix it. You move to what I call the triangle of success in which your people feel accountable, contributing, and appreciated. Remove the word non from the equation. Now, how do your people feel accountable? Number one, you have to set expectations because people want to climb hills. Even unmotivated people want to be motivated. Your job as the leader is to give them the hills that they are to climb and the roadmap of how to do it. And you do that by setting expectations. That's what makes them accountable. And people want to be accountable. Now, you think they don't want to be accountable. Your stance is, man, Matt, my people don't want to do the hard work. They're lazy. It's just not true. Instead of looking at them in that situation, you need to look at yourself. And you need to realize that they're not following your leadership because the leadership you're giving them is confusing. They're unsure. They don't know what you're asking them to do. Your directions suck. You're not allowing them to take accountability for the work they are responsible for. The second component of the triangle of success is, again, remove the word non from contributing. And now you've got people who feel contributing. They feel as though they're moving the needle of the organization, that their work is meaningful, that what they do every single day is a spoke inside the wheel. See, entrepreneurs think that they have to be the wheel. And what you realize is that most people don't want to be the wheel. They want to be a contributing spoke inside the wheel. And your job as a leader, after you've made them accountable through setting expectations, giving them the roadmap, you need to make sure that they feel contributing. How do you do that? For example, most people will reward their salespeople for the results. Unbelievable week or quarter or month or year for our sales team. Yay, sales! And they never say anything to the admin people to the shipping people, to the manufacturing people, to the truck drivers, to the people who had to do the legwork and the extra work that went into sales being successful. So how do you make someone feel contributing? You celebrate the sales result 
in conjunction with celebrating all the other people that contributed to the sales result. Everybody else you can think of as the leader, your job is to sit down and think about it. It's not good enough to just thank the sales team for their numbers. The leader has to think deeper than that, bigger than that. And remember every single person that contributed. We just had one of our banks in town today, a bank that buys our loans. And they gave me a award, uh, the Platinum Award for, for volume and all that sort of stuff for 2017. The first thing I did was congratulate the two salespeople that are the largest contributor of that niche of business. We finance tons of tow trucks, and these two guys are our tow truck experts. And the, we sell these loans to this one specific bank that loves to finance tow trucks, that loves to buy tow truck loans. But I didn't stop there. I could have. First off, I suppose as a shitty leader, I would have just been like, hey, thanks, bank, for the award. Appreciate it. Uh, that's great. But I took it a step further, and I thanked the two primary sales guys who are responsible for the company winning that award. And then I went a step forward and a step further, and I thanked the admin girls who process all of the contracts and paperwork required for the sales guys to be able to produce the amount of tow truck financing to the bank for me to be able to receive the award. Everybody needs to feel as though they are contributing to the big organization's push. The third component of the triangle success is this term, appreciated. Remember, the triangle of trouble is using the word non-appreciated, and the triangle of success is using the word appreciated. How do you make people feel appreciated? Dude, that's the art form. That's the magic. And it's usually not done in public. It's usually done on a one-on-one -on -one in which you take the person aside and you simply say by looking them square in the eye, thank you for the job you're doing. I appreciate the work that you do. I'm grateful for the work that you do. The work that you do contributes to the success of our organization. It's rarely done in a public form because most people in public get so nervous and uncomfortable when they're being called out, even if it's for celebration or for positivity. It's better to do it one-on-one. -on -one. But you got to kind of understand, like I used to have a sales guy here who was really tough to give appreciation to because he demanded the appreciation. If you didn't give him the appreciation, he would hold it against you. But yet if you gave him the appreciation, he would turn his back on you and make you feel as though it was unnecessary and he didn't need it, that you were, you were sort of talking down to him. So very tough guy to give appreciation to, but that doesn't mean you stop. Because with that guy specifically, if I didn't give him appreciation, guess what? I would have been the bad guy. Monero never appreciates me. But when I gave him the appreciation, he shunned me. It made me feel as though I was belittling him or it wasn't necessary. He was above me giving him appreciation. Don't matter. You're the leader. you got to still do the appreciation. So let's just go through it again. If you're the leader in the organization or you work in the organization, you have a requirement to live in the triangle of success, not the triangle of trouble. The triangle of trouble is when you or your, your employees – Feel non-accountable, non-contributing, and non-appreciated. The triangle of success is when your employees feel accountable, contributing, and appreciated. Massive difference by just simply putting the word non in front of the word. Remove the word non and get the organization and your team feeling the triangle of success, which means they feel accountable, they feel contributing, and they feel appreciated. I'm your host, Matt Monero. Thank you for joining me on this new episode of You Need More Money podcast. I will see you down the road. 